You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Good to be back, y'all. Anyway, I asked and he blinks as if realizing he had gone off topic. Ugh, sorry. It's a different story and it doesn't really matter. What matters is that I was wrong. He didn't know me at all, and it turns out I didn't know him either. He took my idle response as an agreement, while I overestimated his actual feelings for me. Wolf sighs once again, hiding his muzzle in the palm of his paws. It was Vul and Verissa all over again. All we were to each other was our respective roles in the tribe. All Tano wanted and cared about was having the son of the chief in his pocket. How else would he get how else would he get to pilfer the tribe's treasury? I should have never humored his delusions. I'm not picking a side e either. I'm not picking a side here. I'm gonna quietly ruffling his neck fluff. But Tano doesn't strike me as evil. Calculative, desperate, maybe, but not cruel for cruelty's sake. I do believe he was misguided, but I pause. Not sure if it's my place or even time to challenge him. But The wolf asks, and I decide, and decide to follow Aralf's hard truths policy. You do tend to dance around the truth a lot, trying to protect other people's feelings. Had you simply told him no the first time around, how could I have possibly known he was being serious? He snaps defensively. Had he brought it up again, I would have said no, but he didn't. To me, it was just pup talk. Am I to treat everything everyone says literally? No, you're right, I'm sorry. I sigh, looking away into the fire, and the wolf hides his muzzle back into his paws. It might be I might be projecting my own insecurities again, applying my experience to a situation it didn't witness. Even knowing you barely, even bar knowing you barely two weeks, I would never have fooled myself that you would run off with me. I'm not saying I'm blameless. We are both to blame. That's true. He concedes through a sigh, raising his head to face me. But there's a difference between omission and delusion. I tried to reason with him, begged even. I wanted us to stay together and continue as we were, but he refused. He got angry and harsh words were exchanged. I felt like the only thing left for me to do was to break it off. Granick pauses, looking to the side as if trying to reason with himself now. We clearly brought out the worst in each other, and I couldn't watch him throw his life away like this. Not because of me. So I did the hardest thing I ever had. I told him it was over. In as plain words as I possibly could muster. Then I walked away. He hangs his head again. It broke my heart to leave him huddled and crying in the woods, but it had to be done. I frown, trying to imagine the scene, and despite understanding Rannick's side of the story, I can't help but feel a bit sorry for the White Wolf, even if he brought this on himself. I just sit there, uncertain what to say, and Rannick simply continues. It took all my strength to collect myself and go back to the feast, appearing normal and happy. I'm so sorry. Don't be. Not yet. He shakes his head with a forced chuckle. If you think that's the end of the story, you clearly don't know Tano. He's a ride or die sort of person. What did he do? I push my head against my lip. I push my hand against my lips, getting a nerve by what might come next. Knowing Tano as little as I do, I can still see that the wolf can be quite unpredictable at times. After some hours passed, he arrived at the feasting grounds drunk and very feisty. He was picking fights left and right, left, right, and center. Darwin, always the older brother to all to us all, stood up and tried to pacify him, but Tano had excuse me, but Tano had none of it. He pushed him away and approached our table, stealing Vool's mug, emptying it a long, disgusting chug that stained his fur all the way down to his pants. I cringed, suffering secondhand embarrassment. He must have been a mess, but can I blame him? He was just dumped. Jeez. Vool was pissed, more so when Tano simply threw the mug back at him, squaring off. What the hell? He said, you want to do this, big guy? Come on, I've got nothing to lose. He mimics Tano's mannerisms because he frowns in clear distress. It stung me to see him like this. I heard to know I was the cause of it, and just as Vool was about to accept the challenge, I interceded. I asked him to let it go, saying that Tano had simply too much to drink, but that's when his attention shifted to me. Right then and there, he confronted me with all the cards in the open. Oh no. He proclaimed his love for me, revealed that we planned to elope together and be happy away from this bigoted, closed-minded shithole. And then... He paused, pulling me to the edge of my seat. And then what? He crawled onto the table, brushing off the food and drink as he went and leaped at me, kissing in front of everyone. Oh, God! I exclaim in utter horror. I thought their fallout would have been something spectacular for the village to be a buzz with to this day, but I never imagined Tano would have gone this far. That is a bit of a... jeez. I was stunned. I didn't mean to be cold, but the shock aided me in saving what little I could for our, what little I could of our joint reputation. You must understand, if I didn't do anything, we could have both gotten banished. He sounds panicked, clearly worried I might think less of him. 
that whatever came next came out of spite or malice, but I know him better. Of course. I say reassuringly, nodding in agreement. I pushed him away, wiped my lips clean, and laughed it off. Vul didn't see the humor in that scene and hurled Tano violently into the dirt. He sighs, clearly not enjoying reliving that night. To be fair, I begin to regret asking in the first place. It sounds like a nightmare. Everyone was looking at me with confusion and fright. Up to that point, we were very close, so I had to make up a story to banish any speculation. I panicked. Wolf cringes and looks away in shame. I made up a lie, that Tano's advances were rejected by a female, and that he's been drowning his sorrows in my ale, crying over my shoulder. That's when Korra rushed to my side, knowing full well what's at stake. He locks his glossy eyes with me. I think deep down she knew the truth. She just couldn't watch her two friends' little secret unravel, so she leaped into the fray like a true she-wolf she is. He smiles, a clear hint of pride directed at the tawny female. She backed me up, stating that it was she who rejected Tano, and because she chose me instead, he got incredibly bitter and sought ways to get back at us. They both played him off as a drunken boy with a broken heart, who simply had too much to drink and wanted to prank me. It was cruel. Krennic sighs angrily, clearly unhappy with himself. It was cruel, but not that far from the truth. You shouldn't feel bad. You were saving him from yourself. You're saving him from himself. By breaking his heart twice over? He asks mockingly, his eyes filling up with tears once again. Why does saving others always mean breaking their hearts? That question catches me off guard. The look in his eyes still haunts me, but if forced, I would do it all over again. Do it all over again? I can't even imagine. Oh god, Brannock, I'm so sorry. I decide to finally embrace him, and the wolf pats my arm in gratitude for the gesture. I can't believe Tana would have resorted to public blackmail to force someone out of the closet in front of all of his peers and family. One second, y'all. Wipe the screen a little bit. There we go. Gotta wipe my screen off some more. What are you on my screen? Get off my screen. Get off my screen. I take like a microfiber cloth and wipe it off. Damn it. Okay, all right. I can't believe Tana would have been resorted to... Okay, I already did that. Okay. It's disgusting. A person's sexuality is no one's secret to reveal. Not like this. Not to coerce them to remain at your side. Guys, one second. I gotta clean this off with my shirt. There we go. That's working. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I got some fingerprints on my monitor for some reason. That's weird. Some of my roommates been touching my monitor. Bizarre. Anyway, that's, that's a little better. Okay. But despite feeling angered and disgusted with Tano, there's still a large part of me that feels pity. Losing Rannick must have felt horrible, almost as if you're cornered, and cornered beasts tend to lash out. I really don't know what to make of this story. Rannick's and Korra's lie might have saved his life, but I doubt Tano would see it this way. We stay in our embrace for a moment, while the, while the wolf takes all, the tr all this turmoil and pain and packs it deep into a dark corner of his psyche, where it should have remained undisturbed. The rift runs deeper than I could have possibly imagined, but it's clear Rannick still holds some deep sentiment towards the white male. He constantly goes out of his way to defend him. Perhaps it's just guilt, or perhaps a tiny part of him still loves him. Korra was right, they're both at fault, but Tano being who he is doesn't make bridging that gap any easier. One second, y'all. Let me have a little, little, little nibble of my pizza. I've been really getting my hunger back slowly. I've not been eating very well the last few days. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. God, that cheese tastes so heavenly. Yeah. I don't, I don't even think I had a thousand calories yesterday. One second, y'all. Let me finish chewing. No, no y'all get pizza mouth, Nary. <laughs> Eventually, Rannick exhales heavily and pulls away. Now you know the truth. And why are you so resentful when it comes to me? Despite managing to save our hides, his reputation was harder to recover. After all, he was the one who kissed me, and I did not reciprocate. With Korra's made a projection added to the mix, it made him look very undesirable. But he left us no choice. It was either ridicule or banishment. Or punishment. Actually, I... <coughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, what a sneeze. Oh, <clears throat> I had pizza in my mouth. Oh, God, I'm so happy he didn't come flying out. Actually, I think he secretly wanted us to get banished. He says in a sad tone. I would have forced the original plan onto you. The wolf nods in resignation. Since then, he was secretly mocked. He feels betrayed and made a fool, and rightfully so. But I feel used and manipulated all the same, and that's something he never even apologized for. There's a clear tone of bitterness in his words, and I place my hand atop his still shaky paw. To this day, he thinks he's the one who lost everything, but I was no better off. 
I was happy with him. It would have been, we would have been happy to get, we could have been happy together. But it wasn't enough, was it? With Tano, nothing is ever enough. He must have it all or none can have anything. So, here we are. He shrugs, displaying his paws in defeat. I think you two need to work this out. I mumble worriedly, but he just throws me a stern look. There's nothing to work out. Tano always wants his way, and he always forces it no matter the consequences. I know I've said you're my first real choice, and now, given all the information, you might think that was a lie. That I had one with him. One second, now. Okay. Chewing done. I listen to him intently, as he, as he infers some of my concerns. But that was an impossible choice to make. It wasn't real. It was a childish, selfish delusion. He sneers. I would never shrug off my duty or my responsibility on a whim for, for on a whim or for a foul flight of fancy. True relationships are built between people who understand their place in the world and who want to share it. Trying to find love while running away from responsibilities like building on quicksand. I nod his apt summary. I hardly agree. You can't run away from who you are, and you cannot let others strong arm you into change. That's why I chose you. He smiles weakly. You came into my life with no expectations or demands. In fact, you were at my mercy. Saving your life was a choice I made while you were unconscious. You didn't ask nor demand it. You've also shown such immense gratitude for the most benign of things. I know that your memory is partially to blame, but you wanted to be there for me, without knowing who I am or even caring for my position in life. You made me feel safe, and I'm certain that despite our precarious situation, you won't force me to choose between you and my people. Because above all else, you took the time to understand me, who I am, and what's important to me. Of course! I nod again. I would never seek to divide your loyalties or retention. I'm here to just be there for you, to help you along the path you've been, you've been set upon. All this, tyranny in your tribe, your family, and friends is what makes you. It's what makes you you. It's a package deal, and I would not have it any other way. I'm sorry you were forced to make such a choice before, but that's, that's not what love is. Thank you. Thank you for listening and understanding. He leans his muzzle, he leans his muzzle in and plants a soft lick on my cheek. Thank you for sharing. A reply, sinking into his neck fluff and enjoying his now muskier than before scent. As I remain there, I think of something to lighten the mood. Tano's pup name is Snowball, isn't it? I ask teasingly, and the wolf blinks in surprise, looking away and acting as if he didn't hear the question. But that change in his posture indicates slight tension, which means I'm right. I take it as a yes. Don't ever call him that, he says in an oddly pleading tone. It's not a command, but a thoughtful request as a, and I'm taken by surprise. Others seem to do it all the time. They shouldn't. He sighs heavily. It's a sign of lack of respect, and it's all fallout of his drunken confession. I might not like him, but he's gotten pretty petty and bitter and constantly tries to get back at people. But at the same time, it's hard not to take some responsibility for it. Somewhere there is still the wolf I used to love. I nearly choke up at his words. Such a good boy. I know that each time he's pup named, it hurts his pride. And now that's all he's got left. Even at odds, he's still mindful of others. Perhaps it's not what I meant I'd, I meant to do here, but if there's even a chance to fix their friendship, I'd like to help if possible. I don't know if Tana really moved on. His actions at the feast seem now fa seem now falling into the jealous ex territory, and I'm not sure Rannick is very much over it either. Maybe he moved on from their relationship, but not the breakup. That loss will haunt him for a long while, and how couldn't it? I can't even begin to imagine how it would have felt with such a shit show. I thought you were impossibly brave after you told me of the battle. Now I know you're all kinds of brave. I wish I was made of as sturdy stuff as you are. You think I'm brave? He snorts, pulling me away and looking into my eyes. His green emeralds shine in the light of the fireplace as he leans in to give me yet another lick. Ooh, excuse me. Life seems to constantly send the same blows my way, and each time I falter. I'm half. I'm a half collapsed shack. I'm a half collapsed shack propped up on stilts. Well then, I don't mind me a fixer upper. I chuckle, drawing a reluctant smile from the wolf. He leans into me, and I reach with my hand behind his head, scratching at his fluff idly. His tense body just shows how much stress and burden overloads this poor guy. I wish I could somehow relive it, relieve it, but I'm at a loss for words. All I can do is what I proclaim to do, to want to do in the first place. Be there for him. So I resign myself to simply stay in his tight embrace, just enjoying the feeling of being wanted and needed. We stay like that for a while, until I notice his bulge expanding slightly inside his pants and pressing against me. I I'm sorry. Oh my. He pulls away, embarrassed, but my hand guides him right back. Don't be. It's a compliment, if anything. His green, shimmering emeralds lock with me in slight disbelief, and I shiver. It's as if he's peering into my very soul, and then suddenly he dives in for a kiss. 
I lean into him, pressing my body against his rock-hard frame. He's groping me, his massive paws cupping my, cupping my butt cheeks, toying with him playfully as we continue to, inter to interlock our lips. His hold gets firmer and he stands up, effectively lifting me up and I wrap my legs around, and lap, and I wrap my legs around his waist. It's exhilarating to be held like this, cradled against his torso, and I groan with pleasure, feeling the bulge poking at my underside. He stumbles a few steps towards the tent, when suddenly, as if touched by a magic wand, his excitement vanishes and he lets go. I fall to my feet, standing in front of him, completely dazed and confused. I, I can't. He mutters apologetically, but I simply grab his paw. It's fine, we don't have to go all the way. But, Orion. No, no buts. I pout playfully. You've left me hanging once already, you know I want it. I whisper enticingly, gently groping his groin. And I know you want it too. I, uh, oh, by the moon. He groans as, I sh as a shudder radiates across his entire body. His eyes dilute and his fur bristles as if electrified. His heart skips a beat when his primal gaze lands on me, but I do not fear him. Instead, I tug gently at his pants with a soft smile. Let's get that off. And I'm going to pause it right there. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Oh, boy. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. It's nice to uh, finally see the kind of background he has with Tano. And it's I do understand quite a bit more why Tano is the way he is. But he brought some of that onto himself. But still, like... Don't make fun of people for, don't make fun of people for their sexual preferences. Come on now, you, you hypocritical wolves. Anyway, y'all, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.